that is what we want to try and help you get rid of slightly. <laughs> okay, so as the video title says, uh, a way to help basically add a filter circuit to your radio. Uh, now what brought this on was, um, was talking to Mark the other day and he had mentioned, uh, I guess another shop what they're doing is, is they're claiming they're doing a super tune, you know, to the radio that's removing a lot of the noise out of the receiver. Honestly, people, there's only so much you can do by aligning the radio. And what I mean by that is, in the receiver circuit, you know, adjusting IF transformers in the receiver's audio circuit, there's only so much you can do to that before it starts to adversely affect the sensitivity of the radio. You know, you adjust for maximum synad, which is maximum audio with minimum noise, but there's only so much you can do with that. Um, so if somebody's claiming that they're doing something phenomenal, you know, with the, their secret tuning, they're just lying to you, flat out. And apparently what this shop is doing is they're actually adding what I'm going to show you. And it's something you can do yourself. So save yourself lots of money. Um, you won't need anything but one capacitor and a soldering iron. Maybe a little piece of wire at the most, but that's it. Nothing else. No, no fancy test equipment. Um, can be a cheap soldering iron. Shoot, you doesn't even need to be plug in a wall. It could be a cordless soldering iron or even you know, one of these propane torch style soldering irons. Just something that gets hot and melts solder. Well, I guess that would be the only other thing you would need would be a little bit of solder. <laughs> but um, what we want to do is, is add a tone switch or a tone control to this radio. A lot of radios have that. Radios like this don't. So this is a unit in PC. What is this? A 68? Yeah, this is a 68XL. Um, it's one I pulled off the shelf. But it works. Um, and what we want to try to do is, is get rid of some of that hiss out of the, out of the receive audio. Um, and what we're going to do that with is a capacitor. Now the value, um, like I say, a lot of radios have that factory installed. There's a, high, a tone high-low switch on the radios. And all they do in those, if you look at the schematic, you, you can reverse engineer what they did. They added a capacitor. That's it. They added a capacitor and a switch to make it selectable. So when you do this modification, you can install it permanently. Just solder the capacitor in where I'm going to tell you. Or if you have a switch, let's say, that you're not using. So like in this radio, if I was doing this to this radio for myself, I'd probably disconnect the bright dim switch. I never use bright. I only ever use dim when there's a you know selectable brightness for radios. Um, dim, the light bulbs and the displays last longer because they're not being driven at full voltage all the time. So, you know, I could disconnect the bright dim switch, hook up the... Uh, illumination so it's dim all the time and it frees up that switch and then I could just install that switch in series with the capacitor and it would allow me to turn it on and off or it would be the same as let's say a, you know a different a Cobra or any other radio that has a, a tune high low switch um, what but what that's doing is it is in radios like that after the signal has come in through your antenna it's gone through the mixer circuits, it's been down converted and frequency demodulated. That signal then goes through, so once it's been demodulated, it's now an audio frequency. It's no longer, there's no RF left in there. It's all audio. That audio goes to your volume control and then comes out the wiper and goes to the audio amplifier circuit, which then increases that signal level and then it sends it to the speaker. It's just that simple. I mean, it's more complicated than that, but. In a nutshell, that's what happens. Signal gets down converted, gets demodulated, goes to the volume control, because at that point it's audio, and then the volume control sets the level that's going to the audio amplifier circuit, which controls the volume coming out of your speaker. We want to add a capacitor right there. You don't need to cut any wires. You don't need to remove any parts out of your radio. You're going to install this capacitor from the wiper of the volume control, to the DC board ground. That's it. Just that simple. So it could be anywhere in here. Ideally, you want to keep your lead length as short as possible, but you know, worst case scenario, shoot, you could run a wire back to the negative terminal on your jack. Um, you know, anywhere that's DC 
ground potential is what you want to attach one side of that capacitor to. So, you know, the, all of these IF transformer cans in here, they're all soldered to the DC board ground. The transformer, the outside strap on that, it's soldered to the DC board ground. When you look at the bottom of a radio, you'll see big chunks of copper trace that just snake all over the radio. That's the DC board ground potential. Um, so, Depending on what radio you're working on, you may have different styles of controls. You know, if it's a fairly modern radio, it may have a tiny little guy like this, not very big, and it may even be attached to a circuit board, you know, a little small circuit board or a big circuit board for that matter. But what you're always going to be looking for is the center terminal. So this one has three terminals. The wiper is going to be the center terminal. If you're working on an old antique, you know, this is a control I built up for a Tram D201. So this is a dual control, and I specifically wanted to show a dual control uh, because this radio is a single. Honestly, a lot of radios have a dual control, especially if it's a mobile. Um, they'll have a volume squelch control. This one uses a single control for the volume and on-off. So I wanted to show one of those so you know which section to get to. So like I say, this one's an on-off control, so it has the... I'm trying to do this without ripping this... Oh, man, that thing is tight. It's new. <laughs> but has the center and it has the other, the outer or rear control, okay? The volume control is going to be your, usually going to be your center. So you know, like on this radio, there is a center, okay? This one just doesn't happen to be volume and squelch. It's used for other functions. But the center one is the one you want to get to. There's So there's two sets of contacts on this thing. The center, we'll try to get a picture down inside of it. If you can see... You can see right down in there, you can see when I turn this center shaft, the rear control is the one that's being used. When you turn the rear or the outer control, if you look down in the front section here, you can see the wiper arm swinging by. Okay, So you want to always go to, on a dual control, you're going to want to go to the rear control. But the same thing, you're going for the center contact. And what you're going to do is, is install a capacitor there. Um, doesn't, there's not really a lot of requirements on that other than it can't be an electrolytic capacitor. So don't use something like this, aluminum electrolytic capacitor. Um, it could be a bipolar, it could be a, a aluminum style capacitor, it just can't be electrolytic, it can't be polarized, it needs to be a non-polarized capacitor. Now on radios that have that installed from the factory, a tone switch let's say, or a high cut, so even you know, radios like that have a tone. It's just nowadays most radios don't call it tone, they call it high cut. Because that's what we're doing. We're cutting out the high frequency out of this. So that's that's a one thing to be very clear about. If you're into high fidelity stereo radio, which just means noisy radio, um, this is not the modification for you because we are going to limit your audio bandwidth. And what we're doing that with is a capacitor. So it can be ceramic, it can be a pot, you know, like one of these down here, it could be a ceramic style capacitor. It could be a poly dip. So let me just grab a drawer full of those. You know, it could be something like one of these. You know, people are familiar with the little green poly dips. Color is not important. They come, as you can see, in several different colors from this like brownish red color to blue. I mean, it's just the manufacturer's coating that they put on there. But it'd be a poly style. Um, this will work on tube type radios. The only difference between doing this on a solid state and a tube type radio is if you do this to a tube type radio, um, just be aware that there could be high voltage at the volume control. And if there is high voltage there, you're going to want to use a high voltage capacitor. So, again, grab a drawer, drawer full of capacitors here. So, you know, in a tube type radio, you might want to be using something like one of these. You know, these are rated at 600 to 630 volts. But, we're in a radio like this, you know, pretty much... Oh, come on, drawer. Get my drawer back in the cabinet over there. Um, in a radio like this, you know, you can just buy... And it's probably the best thing for you to do, because I don't want to tell you a value of capacitance to stick in there, and then you're not happy with it. What I would probably suggest is, is go to like eBay or Amazon and buy a very cheap capacitor kit. We don't need super high quality caps here. Um, Chinese, and honestly, most of the Chinese, the caps coming out of China nowadays, they're pretty darn close. I've tested a lot of them. And man, they're actually not bad. 
you know, they're better than, I think, in a lot of cases than the stuff they were using back in the days when these radios, stuff like this, was built. So, yeah, you can pick up a cheap ceramic capacitor kit or, like, a green poly dip, and that's probably the best thing to get. Um, they're probably going to be a little bit cheaper. Just get, like, one of those little small assortment kits, kits of uh, poly-style capacitors. Uh, but, like I say, it's really not important. Um, main thing is is the value. And like I say, for something like this, low voltage caps are fine. For tube type, you may want high voltage if there is high voltage present at, at the uh, the volume control. That's just something to be aware of with tube type. But this would work for pretty much anything. Stereos, car, any audio amplifiers, anything. This will work with pretty much all of that. And what we're doing is, and it's the same thing manufacturers did to radios that had the tone switches, you're adding a capacitor from the wiper, which You'll have the audio coming once it's demodulated, goes through like in a radio like this, through the, the AM detector diode. Eventually it'll find its way to one of these outside pins on this volume control. And then will come back out from the wiper, the center contact. That will then go to the audio circuit. So you're going to attach a capacitor, whatever value you decide to use, is going to be attached from the wiper. Don't remove anything, any wires or anything that's attached to these. Leave it on there. You're just adding a part. So solder one pin to there. The other side, if it's going to be a permanent installation that's non-selectable with a switch, the other side of the capacitor just goes to ground. That's it. One part. Boom, done. <laughs> um, and I want to simulate that. So what I have, I have, if we look down in here, I have this red clip going to the orange wire here, which goes to the center or the wiper on the volume control on-off switch, okay? <laughs> Take my mount up there, zoom back out, and then, actually let me zoom back in here a little bit, and then just for convenience to attach my ground clip, because I'm going to be hooking it up and disconnecting it, I've soldered a little loop of wire to this transformer can just to give me a, a convenient place to take this to add this in circuit, because once I once I touch this to ground, that's going to add the capacitor into value. And what I'm doing to add capacitance is, I'm using a capacitor substitution box here, okay, one of these little guys, and it just has a range of, of non-polarized capacitors from 0.0001 to 0.22 microfarad, and it's just selectable by rotating the switch. Now, from 0.0001 to a about 0.01, you're not going to notice anything. The, f the frequencies that a capacitor in that small value, it would be really high frequencies. Once you get to about 0.01 and higher, you're going to start to notice the sound. The high frequencies are going to start to disappear. So, you know, if we were looking at this on a spectrum analyzer, let me grab a scrap of paper here. Okay, so if we were to look at this on a spectrum analyzer, you know, you'd have your audio. So if you were putting through white noise into the speaker of this thing, you know, that might be, you know, basically what we'd see. There'd be our, like, well, so around, let's say, 300 hertz. Because most radios, the audio bandwidth is usually going to be somewhere between 300 to 3,000 hertz is the audio bandwidth. So, you know, that would be this hump right here if we were viewing it on a spectrum analyzer. By adding that capacitor in circuit, we're going to start to cut off this high end here. It's not going to affect the low end, it's going to affect the high end. And the higher the value is in capacitance, the more the signal. It's going to start to, it's going to, start to filter out. And all it's doing is, is taking that, that high frequency content and grounding it. It's just sending that frequency to ground where the low frequency can still get passed. So, Enough jibber-jabber, let's hook it up and see what it does. So, we'll turn it on. Got a nice noisy channel, I've made sure I've turned on some battery chargers. I even have the camera part plugged in, so I've got lithium nickel metal hydride battery chargers plugged in here, the cell phone, i got a tablet plugged in, so yeah, I've got all kinds of noisy RF, you know, nerve-wracking hiss, hiss creators. Um, plugged in right now, so we got a really good noisy receiver, so and I'll set this to 0.0001, so you'll see right there. I'll hook this up, and there's no difference. And until I get to about 
0.01, there's really no difference. Once I start to get up above that, you're going to start to notice the high frequency is going to start to cut out. But luckily, the high frequency is where most of that noise is. You can see by the time we get to 0.22, it's really narrowed the audio frequency spectrum down. And you can hear now, if I just disconnect it, it's like more than cut the audio level in half. Okay, now most radios that have a tune switch from the factory, you're going to find their value is usually going to be between 0 .033 and 0 .047. That's the average, I would say, for you know most radios that have a tune switch. You can put it at whatever you want. So if you want more filtering, you want to really narrow it up. That's why I say if you get a capacitor assortment kit, you can play with these values. Um, I probably wouldn't get too much above 0.068 to 0.1. Once you get much higher than that in AM, it is really going to start to affect the fidelity. Um, you want to get rid of the noise, because you want to try to hear the people you're talking to, but at the same time, you don't want to limit the audio bandwidth so much that, yeah, you can hear the person now, but now they just they don't sound right because there's just no highs or actually you've gotten to the point where you've even taken the mid-range audio out and the only thing left is the bass, the really low frequencies. So, like I say, most radios you'll see 0.033 to 0.047. So, you know, if I disconnect it, that's the difference, you know, adding a 0.047 in circuit. Gets rid of that really high-pitched sound without affecting the, the mids the mids too much. Like I say, you could go to 0 .068, a little bit more pronounced. If you go, like I say, 0 .1 would probably be my maximum limit. Definitely a huge difference there. But that's it. That's all you got to do, people. You, you, no, like I say, no fancy test equipment needed, no special tools, um, nothing. Just a capacitor. Stick a capacitor, wiper of the volume control to DC board ground. You've effectively added a uh, low pass filter, an audio low pass filter to your audio circuit and helps to cut out some of that noise. Um, like I say, I, from what my understanding is, some people are doing that saying that they're, yeah, they're super tuning the radio when they're not super tuning the radio, they're modifying the audio circuit um, by limiting the audio bandwidth. Now, to me, that's a good thing. That's a, you know, I personally, but that's a person. That's a very personal thing. What you want your radio to sound like, and like I say, this is something you can play around with yourself. Find that happy, happy medium. Um, what you're happy with. Another thing you could do if you really wanted to get crazy with this modification, you could install a rotary switch like this. You know, take like maybe a four or five position rotary switch, and you could hook up. You know, let's say a 0 .033, a 0 .047, 0 .068, a 0 .1, and a 0 .15 microfarad uh, capacitors to that rotary switch, and then every, you know, depending what position you're in, it would control how much you know audio filtering you're doing. You'd need to add a separate control somewhere. You repurpose one. You take out a rotary can you know like volume or not a volume, but maybe let's say a if it had had a I don't know. This one, yeah, it's got RF gain, mic gain. You know, if you had a, if you never use the RF gain, which a lot of people don't, you could remove the RF gain control, hardwire that permanently, and then install a multi-position rotary switch. There's lots of different ways of doing it, but I wanted to show the easiest way to do it. Just add a cap. One cap is all you need. And like I say, if you get one of those cheap little Chinese uh, cap kits, um, you just want to make sure that if you get a, a capacitor assortment kit, that it has probably somewhere between 0 0.022 to like 0 0.1. You want to make sure it has the capacitors in that range because those are going to be the ones you're probably going to be using when you do this modification. So I hope that helps. Um, so get out there and get to modifying people. Quiet up your radios.